Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to show you how we install Backsplash. So let's get started. All right guys, so this is a, a small job, but a very tricky job because we have a bunch of outlets that we have to cut around. Um, so that's going to be tricky, but we're going to address that later. But so this is the tile that we're installing and Usually you use thinset to layer tile, but in this case, we're gonna be using mastic. So it's this acrylic product that we're gonna be using. So let's see how it goes. Installing Backsplash is a perfect project for an Avid DIYer. Uh, Avid being the key word there. These type of projects require a certain set of skills and it starts by knowing and getting the layout correct. It's super important to pick your tiles that will fit perfectly between your counter and the cabinet. This will help you avoid waste because you won't have to make the unnecessary cuts uh, to make your top row fit. Um, just in case your tile doesn't fit then you will have to modify the top layer and make your appropriate cuts there. In this case, we're using adhesive to lay our tiles uh, because we're using glass tiles and they're, they're light and they have a mesh backing, so it works perfectly. Um, but there are several different types of adhesive or thin sets available, so make sure you do your research before, and before tackling a project like this. I'll talk about how to set the tiles in a bit, but first let's talk about cutting tiles. In this case, we're using glass tiles, so I'm using a rigid tabletop wet saw. Uh, this saw is perfect for small jobs like this. The key to cutting glass tile on a wet saw is to go super slow. If you forcefully push the tile through the saw, then it will chip on you. Um, so cut slow or use a sacrificial piece behind your tile to avoid chipping. advise you to get a laser level if you're going to be doing any sort of wall tiling. In this case, I'm using the laser level to line up my vertical joints. Um, this takes the guesswork out of tiling and allows you to work efficiently and faster. As always, I will leave links to all my products that I use in the description below. And please subscribe if you like this video. It allows me to put out more high quality content. And if you already subscribed, thank you. so let's set more tiles. Setting the tile is simple. You use the flat side of the 3 16th trowel to spread your adhesive. And then you use the notch side to directionally trowel the adhesive. And then you simply just pick up your tile and, and set it on the wall. Um, you can use spacers to keep a gap between your counter and the tile. Um, and this gap can be filled in later with caulk. Um, this will create a small gap that allows for expansion or movement between the countertop and the backsplash. Once you set your tile, you can use the float to gently press the tile in to make sure it's, it's perfectly set. And that's it. Then you repeat the same process over and over. I get this question often, how much does it cost? So let's talk about this. Um, usually you can price your project once you break down your measurement into square feet. 
Uh, in this case, uh, the project is about 25 square feet. This, that includes 10% waste. So there are two ways of looking at this, the material cost and the labor cost. So material cost in this case would be tile. Um, so tile on average, I think this one was about $8 per square foot. So that's $200. Mortar and thin set, about $30. Non-sanded non grout, about $30. So total you're looking at $260. Uh, um, labor, let's talk about labor. Um, national average for a job like this is about $1,000. Uh, but based on the actual square footage, uh, we're going to say that the labor was $25 per square foot. So that totals to about $625, but I would round up to $700. Uh, now, this is a North American pricing, and it will vary based on where you're located. Um, the labor price in this case might seem very high, but it's actually a conservative estimate considering that this install could be a multi-day multi job. Um, this homeowner doesn't have to buy any tools like tile saw, trowel, etc. And most of all, it allows the homeowner to sit back and reap the joy of providing employment to your local trades. save the complicated cuts for last so I can spend more time on them and get them right on the first shot. Uh, now you've seen me do several notch cuts already and they're pretty simple. You just mark on the tile and then cut on the line. However, the U notch cut is a little complex because it requires you to remove material uh, in the middle of the tile. Uh, you can easily do this by making several relief cuts and then carefully flattening out the middle by holding the tile right on the blade. Now, be careful when doing this. Uh, just make sure you hold the tile um, carefully um, and always wear your safety glasses and ear protection when using power tools. So we're back at it. So this is day three in this project. First day, we did all this. So tiles are stuck, they're dry. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start grouting them. We are using non-sanded grout. Um, so let's get to it. Grouting the tile is super simple and it's kind of fun. Just take the non-sanded grout and smear it all over the tiles and then take your grout float and push it in between the tiles. Be sure to fill in all the grout lines. Uh, wait about 15 to 20 minutes uh, and then come back with a damp sponge and remove the excess grout. Always move the sponge in a circular motion so you don't pull the grout from the grout line. Uh, do this several times until you remove all the excess grout from the tile.
right, so we've increased the distance between the electrical box and the outlet. So you will need to buy two inch screws to reinstall the outlet. Now this project took about two days and I would say about 12 to 13 hours. And I'm really happy with the results, so check it out. As always, this is DRAM Build. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.